In the crime novel, When Will There Be Good News? By Kate Atkinson, recurring character Jackson Brody takes center stage as the story weaves together multiple seemingly unrelated narratives. The tale commences three decades ago, introducing six-year-old Joanna Mason and her family. Abandoned by her father, Joanna resides in an isolated house with her mother and siblings. Determined to provide for her children, Joanna's mother's world is shattered when a man arrives and brutally murders her, along with Joanna's brother and sister. Miraculously, Joanna manages to escape, fleeing into the surrounding fields. In the present day, an enigmatic man shadows a young boy at a playground, intent on procuring a strand of his hair. The narrative then shifts to Reggie, a teenage girl who assumes the role of babysitter for Joanna Hunter, the now 36-year-old survivor of the earlier murders. Joanna has since married and has a young baby. Reggie, a bright yet troubled girl, feels resentful about her scholarship at a small school and grapples with recent orphanhood. Babysitting offers her a glimpse into the loving family bond she yearns for, and she regards Joanna as the epitome of an ideal mother. Meanwhile, Reggie's brother treads a dangerous path towards a life of crime, causing her deep concern. Joanna's world is also plagued by worry when a police detective pays her a visit regarding her husband. Simultaneously, the mysterious man covets the boy's hair to conduct a DNA test and establish paternity. Louise, the detective who visited Joanna, faces her own struggles, balancing concerns about her teenage son with pressure from her new husband to expand their family. She, too, sees Joanna's life as idyllic. As the narrative unfolds, Louise grapples with investigating Joanna's husband for possible insurance fraud. She uncovers the unsettling fact that Andrew Decker, the man responsible for the murder of Joanna's family, has been released from prison. Jackson Brody, a retired private detective, enters the scene as the man seeking his son's DNA. With these disparate threads intertwined, the story progresses, enticing readers to discover how these characters' lives will intersect and what secrets will be unveiled. In a twist of fate, Jackson boards the wrong train and mistakenly heads towards Edinburgh. Tragedy strikes as the train crashes, and Jackson regains consciousness to find Reggie performing CPR on him. Later, during a dinner with her in-laws, Louise reminisces about her past relationship with Jackson. To his surprise, Jackson realizes he has someone else's wallet in his possession after the chaotic aftermath of the crash, it belongs to Andrew Decker. Meanwhile, Reggie makes a disturbing discovery, Joanna and her baby have vanished. When Joanna's husband claims she went to visit a sick aunt, Reggie harbors doubts about his explanation. Additionally, Reggie becomes a witness to two men threatening Joanna. Dealing with a brief bout of amnesia, Jackson struggles to remember his identity and fears he may be Andrew Decker. However, he eventually recovers from his injuries. In a harrowing turn of events, two men, potentially connected to Reggie's brother, assault her in her own home. Concerned for Joanna's safety, Reggie turns to Louise, pleading for police intervention. Upon seeing Reggie's bruises, Louise becomes suspicious. Driven by her concerns, Louise discovers that Jackson was on the train during the crash and decides to visit him. During their conversation, Jackson confesses that he is still deeply in love with her. Reggie, growing fond of Jackson, realizes they share similar perspectives and childhood experiences. Despite Louise's reluctance to involve the police based on vague worries, she asks Jackson to search for Joanna. Reluctantly, Jackson agrees. Together, Jackson and Reggie go to Joanna's residence and spot the two men who had threatened her. They discreetly follow them, which leads them to a house. Just as they arrive, Joanna emerges from the house, covered in blood, holding her baby. It is revealed that Joanna had been kidnapped by individuals to whom her husband owes money. She managed to escape her captors by violently defending herself with a pen and a knife. When Jackson arrives on the scene, Joanna asks him to set the house on fire to eliminate any evidence of the struggle and protect her from potential murder charges. Amidst the chaos, Jackson discovers a shocking revelation, Andrew Decker ended up with all of his possessions, just as he has Decker's wallet. Decker, tormented by his circumstances, visits Jackson's apartment and tragically takes his own life. The events surrounding Decker's suicide further unravel the intricate connections and mysteries entangling the lives of these characters. Joanna, unable to recall any specifics about her kidnapping, informs the police of her memory loss. 
As the investigation progresses, she uncovers her husband's deceitful actions, emptying their joint bank accounts. Fortunately, the house is registered under her name, providing some solace amidst the chaos. Jumping ahead a few months, Joanna's husband has been apprehended and taken into custody. In the aftermath of the ordeal, Reggie receives an inheritance, which prompts her to move in with Joanna, offering support and assistance in navigating the aftermath of her husband's crimes, the ensuing divorce, and caring for the baby. Their bond strengthens as they face these challenges together. Meanwhile, Jackson discloses a significant revelation, he was the man who rescued Joanna from the fields 30 years ago. Learning of Andrew Decker's suicide, Jackson uncovers the fact that Joanna had visited Decker in prison a month prior to his release. He ponders whether Joanna had influenced Decker's decision to take his own life and questions the significance of such information, given the atrocities Decker committed against her. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.